Look at those nubs. Those are sweet nubs. <laughs> Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. If you hear a little mouse going around the shop, it's uh, just my buddy Duclaw. Say hi, Duclaw. Sweet nubs. <laughs> There comes a time in every man's, uh, well, in every man's year where that uh, fat Coca-Cola salesman, the creepy guy, slides down your stovepipe, what for leaving a surprise under your bush. And that surprise just might be the Cockford Ollie mug. Now, I'm going to give away a bunch of these in the doobly-doo as a, a little je ne sais quoi, but also you can trust your legal tender. Get them over on, uh, well, there's a link in the doobly-doo. It's a safety mug. Safety, you ask? That's right. Microaggressions aside, we got we got the come and visit me side, and we also have the I want to get the fuck out of this board meeting side. Now that the make cool shit and put it on the internet part is done, quick, fast, in a hurry, I wanted to have a look again at these Durapulse drives. We had the two horsepower part. Now we got the three horsepower part. And one good thing that come of it was the heat sinking. Super craptacular if you look at this heat sinking here. And I didn't notice this until somebody, you know, you sort of you sort of glean over it there that yeah, it's there. But if you look at the state of Rua, just horrific, all cracked up, real thick and schmooey. That's no fucking good. Because these things, their lifetime is dependent on the heat. So the better the heat dissipation, the longer these IGBT, all the components are gonna last, the longer that the capacitors are gonna last everything. So heat sinking is critical. And we see here really, really craptacular. Yeah, dried right the fuck out and cracked. Real terrible. So if you do buy one of these cheaper drives, you're gonna to wanna to take it apart and reseat these. We're gonna pull the crusty old schmegma out of this one and replace it with the thermal joint compound type 120 silicon carney style from Wakefield Thermal Solutions. I have no idea if and this is any good, but <laughs> pissing with the cock you got. Now the thing is about this silicon, silicone oils, uh, solvent doesn't attack them. They're like you can't, you can't wipe it off. You have to mechanically smear it off and really get in there proper. Now this IGBT module is not the Infineon Sherman brand. It's FE. They used to have a way cooler logo and then some marketing wanketeer got in there, but it's Fuji Electric, a huge uh, Japanese company, something like $50 billion market cap, you know, just slightly smaller than Tesla. <laughs> what makes cars? You can only get serviced in big cities. I digress. Okay, so we clean all that shit off. <sighs> Here's the thing, once you get into the meat of her, you start to find other things you don't like. Look at the big ridges there. Well, we're gonna try and knock these down. Uh, be gentle. I'm a little bit scared, it's my first time. At least there's somebody with me this time. Say hello, Duclaw. Hello, Duclaw. <laughs> That's some comedy gold right there. <laughs> We hearken back now to the age-old question. Bigger the gob, the better the job, or little dabble do ya, and a big gob will screw ya. I think we're gonna go little dabble do ya. And the barest whiff. Well, maybe not the barest whiff, but we'll go easy, that's for sure. I think it's safe to assume, Miss Moneypenny, that the torque on these fasteners is critical. Click. <laughs> there are electrical engineers in convulsions right now. We're going to take this. Uh, the thing is, we're going to take it back apart because I want to see the patterns, what this created. See if it's actually seating proper. Oh, there you go. You don't know until you know. That's right. <laughs> A little slow on the uptake, this one. <laughs> well, we can see here the pattern from, the, well, this is under stress, under duress, obviously, because very little schmoo here, very little schmoo here, and thicker and thicker and thicker. So I think we went, she was a little thick. We're gonna put her on a reducing diet and get, get rid of some of that smeary action. Now we just make some happy little mountains. And don't be afraid to get right in there. 
when the, when the, there's a bit of an art to this apparently so one thing i am doing i'm going down this way and i'm also going across that way so i think it'll work out fine since you're already tuned into the all drives all the time channel we might as well have a look at the gs or the smaller two horsepower versus the three horsepower You'd, for frog snacks with the work back there <laughs> She's a noisy little pig squealer. Prior to being so rudely interrupted, what we were get Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> From two horsepower to three horsepower, a little bit different construction. The layout's the same. Overall, it's the same, but the devil being in the details. So this is an extruded section heat sink, and then it's been a uh, face planed. What do you call that? Uh, you know, just cleaned up on the face. And this guy is actually a uh, sand cast. You see that? Sand cast section and then machined just in that one locale where the IGBT module went. Now, the we, we can see there's not that much extra additional capacitance, definitely not a third more capacitance in here. Now somebody mentioned this on the Patreon page and I thought it was interesting in that when you when you construct these and you need to glue them together for uh, rigidification, you actually need to add a sleeve to these capacitors in order to get the longevity out of them because otherwise the sleeve falls off. But this is on the smaller drive, on the larger drive, same brand, just slightly more capacitance and they haven't done that. They haven't added a sleeve. Also on here, you can see on the bigger drive, we actually have a, uh, a very fast response fuse. We actually have forced air. On the smaller drive we have no van. And on this guy we got a couple extra relays but the power module here what provides the 24 volts and the 5 volts for the brain boxery that's all the same. We have a whole bunch of opto couplers. We have some uh, capacitance here just to, to cut down the noise. Those X2 style capacitors. Same control board exact same control board same contacts down here the motor leads are actually bigger so we hop up to the next size and we see here instead of metal oxide varistors for noise reduction on the output to the motor of course as those igbt's are switching so quickly you get a lot of noise instead what we have is some maybe freewheel diodes there's a pack there that looks just like a diode. It's a big, beefy pack, surface mount device. So, not too much, not too, too much in the difference. Sets you to thinking here about planned obsolescence. Look at the state of that. Wow, terrible surface of Mars, ancient dead riverbeds. So we're gonna clean that right up. Is that something that they've omitted so that the drives fail? well in a certain lifetime is that is that something or is that just well don't don't attribute to malice what you can uh, attribute to incompetence maybe a little of both <laughs> who can say but we're going to fix this up so she lasts as long as as she possibly can um well at least until i wire it up backwards pro tip just the tip mind it helps if you turn the jesus camera on of note is this heat sink beautiful fly cut surface finish compared to the other one what was cnc milled with an end mill now an end mill has a two or three degree little chamfer in the center of her and and that creates a ridge when you go around so you, you're not necessarily getting the best surface finish and definitely you know one thou two thou of material difference that's huge when you're talking about sink and heat so I, i'm really glad i touched that up with the abrasive i think i did good since the impossible awaits us on yonder Mazak milling machine, uh, my buddy Duclaw got his inward raspy hooks on some proper industrial drives. These are his scratchy. And you can see now the difference between a marginally industrial drive, sort of, cons well, not, not quite hung low brand, but not, not the best. And a his scratchy Japanese design drive the difference is incredible. You have a look at this. In the brain box, all kinds of inputs and outputs, what come with pin uh, dip switches for changing from 20 milliamp to, to all, all sorts of different stuff. Expansion ports, look at this. You don't see that for additional 
who knows what memory <laughs> memory expansion or something even insert non-offensive homosexual barb no here a double ender on the ethernet uh, cat5 port <laughs> some might say sick but it's even legal in alabama nowadays and we also have the altera max 2 that is what's doing all the calculations that altera that sounds to me like an expensive part and look at down here all these routered slots for isolation it's even got a current transformer instead of just a current shunt big massive igbt module i mean look at her well this is it's, there is some there's some heft in here it's got gravity contained oh and this look at this you're gonna shit your cacks over this one big monster heat sink positive airflow if i can get her carefuling carefuling the last time i carefuling duh, shit flew all over the place look at the size of those capacitors <laughs> one of those blows and you're gonna feel it from upstairs there <laughs> This concludes the all drives, all the time broadcast. In a future video, we're going to take apart this uh, nuts and bolts, some fun stuff. A zero backlash cycloidal drive straight from J.A. Penn. It's, uh, yeah, these things are friggin' cool. Also, if we see we got the boss here now, so uh, look busy. As I was saying, you can trust your luck. I'll give away plenty of these in the doobly-doo. Or uh, trust your legal tender. Of course, uh, all money goes into the beer fund. Say it nice and loud. The, the, the microphone doesn't pick you up unless you say it nice and loud. Hi, boys and girls. Keep your Richard in a bad habit. <laughs> <laughs>